guys so welcome back to my channel so last time we were discussing uh, we were discussing experimental techniques and we did the first technique that was dissolving filtration evaporation slash crystallization we discussed some factors that some common questions we ask you such as how to increase filtration rate and we did uh we did the example of barium sulfate and sodium chloride right now we'll move on to sublimation so let's move on to sublimation okay so first of all when to do sublimation right for example for example let's just say i have two solids that are mixed up so there is solid one and there is solid two i was you know transporting one of them from one place to another and solid one fell into solid two now solid one is sublime right and solid 2 in non sublime solid one of them needs to be sublime and the other one needs to be non sublime now there are a few solids that you need to know as a fact are sublime as well i mentioned them in the previous chapter but i will be mentioning one of the most important ones in this chapter and that are ammonium compounds here, ammonium salts so Let's just say example ammonium salts. There's one other prop. Uh, there are a few properties I want you to write down uh, about ammonium salts that would be very useful. Uh, so let's just say properties of ammonium compound. I mentioned two of them in uh, the previous chapter, but I'll be mentioning a few more in this one. Ammonium compound. Now you need to know these very well. All right. So most of the time they're acidic. All right. They are sublime solids. They are used as fertilizers. All right. They are used as fertilizers. They decompose on heating usually. Usually they decompose on heating, but that heating needs to be done under high pressure for them to be decomposed. Otherwise they'll just sublime. All right, so decompose on heating, on heating, and they're all soluble in water. All right, they're soluble in water. Few properties that, if you know, will make your life a lot easy. Property of a medium compound. Great. So what we do in this technique is that we take a filter funnel inverted filter funnel and the mixture in a let's say china dish and so this is the mixture this is the mixture this is the china dish china dish this is filter funnel Uh, we actually insert a cotton swab here so cotton this is cotton and what I do is I heat this now what happens is that uh, the sublime solid uh, sublimes and starts to be deposited on the walls of the filter funnel all right so that will separate the sublime solid from the non-sublime solid. Now, there's a few things that you need to know when we are talking about colors. First of all, uh, a very famous uh, solid that we usually ask is iodine. So, iodine. All right, in its solid state, it's um, actually black. It's black. Iodine, when it's vapor. Or gaseous state it's violet all right great so that was sublimation now we'll move on to centrifugation all right so here's the centrifugal machine so uh, it is actually done inside a machine a special machine so it actually what it actually does is as you can see that we put in some test tubes here 
in these holes and what happens is that because of the exploitation of the centrifugal force the uh, the particles separate into layers so for example for example if this was a test tube of blood let's say all right now when i'll put it inside this machine it will rotate at so high speeds i think i think it is 600 revolutions per second and what will happen is that the particles will be separated in form of layers with the more dense being in the lower region and the high uh, with the more dense being in the lower region and the less dense being in the upper regions all right so this may be, uh, this will be separated for example this is plasma this will be rbc's this will be platelets i'm just writing down random components of blood you need not to know them all right so that's what centrifugation is it's not that much part of the syllabus but we just mention the wordings sometimes in the exam in the mcqs so it's better that if you know so that you do not actually get baffled right it is uh, it's only one thing that you can write is that it's used to separate microscopic particles used to separate microscopic particle all right now move on to the next process now it's also not very much part of your syllabus but we do mention them in the mcqs that is decanting all right so just give it a thought uh, give it a thought if you have a let's say beaker of water and it has some grapes in it all right pebbled grapes anything and you need to separate them now you won't use a filter paper because it's not usually available inside homes what you'll do is that uh, you'll allow the grapes to settle and then you'll transfer this inside another beaker and you'll try to uh, to actually so this is a beaker so you'll try that water falls inside this beaker and now it has water and the grapes are left behind right this this is what usually people do and you might put a hand something to stop the grapes or something this is a stick i'm really sorry for my bad drawing <laughs> all right so yeah so it's alternative to f uh, filtration alternative to filtration but we usually don't perform it in labs because it's not a very efficient method see some particles can actually spill inside the water beaker as well and it's an inefficient method all right so if instead of saying that you'll you know take another beaker add water uh, try to add water inside the beaker trying to keep the grapes inside the previous one now that's very long wording and that's not very efficient what we say in chemistry is we'll decant the grapes all right great next method is solvent extraction solvent extraction now this is done through prop now this is very much part of your syllabus and you need to uh, listen very carefully so uh, this method is actually based on the difference in density of liquid all right so what happens is that this is a separating funnel now i'll be drawing it it's a special apparatus we have in the labs uh, so this is the separating funnel we have a tap here all right what we do is that for example we have two immiscible liquids immiscible means that they cannot dissolve and they have different densities so immiscible liquids with different densities all 
all right so 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 for example oil and water so as you know oil settles above water so this is oil this is water now we have a mixture so what i'll do it i'll pour this in the this mixture inside the separating funnel now this apparatus is known as separating funnel and i'll have a clean beaker here all right and i'll open the tap uh, so first of all i'll allow water to settle here this is water and let's say this is oil here till here this all is and this all is oil this all is water so what i do is that i allow the water to actually get inside the beaker i'll actually open the tap and this water will drip inside the beaker and as soon as we reach the ending point of water till and the starting point of oil we'll close the tap again we we'll now replace the beaker all right beaker is now replaced and then uh, oil is allowed to drip great but do notice that it's not very efficient method all right uh, due to human reflex action for example you may not be able to exactly stop the water level at where you want all right so so there are limitations to this process all right so next we have so this these are the three methods that we discussed today uh, four methods sublimation centrifugation decanting and solvent extraction next we'll be starting with distillation in this video so let's start with distillation so yeah let's start with distillation so i'll be drawing the apparatus so all right so this is the apparatus so this is thermometer so this is thermometer and this apparatus this is a special apparatus in the lab so this is known as live big condenser all right uh, so water comes in from here water in now it's cool water i'll explain you the whole process in a minute there's water out these are the droplets these collect inside the conical flask so this is a flask conical flask this is a round bottom flask round bottom flask this is a tripod stand tripod stand all right um, and what actually happens is that I provided heat all right so heat is being supplied now when I supply heat so when I supply heat what happens is that but just let, uh, let's just forget that and let's uh, just see when do we use distillation first all right so for example I have initial aqueous if I want to uh, let's say get NaCl that is the solute from the solvent I'll do evaporation but let's say let's say I want water from the solution then I'll do distillation this is just a, this just what I wanted to tell you to give you a clear mindset so it is to separate solute from solvent uh, solvent from solution right great so now let's just discuss the phenomena so I provide heat now what happens is that this is the solution now these are not the solute particles these are marble chips all right these are marble chips they serve two purposes first of all they are stirrers so what happens is that they shake and they distribute the heat evenly it's important for heat to be distributed evenly throughout the liquid all right and as well uh, they are anti-bumping granules as well 
what that means is that they prevent spurting of liquid spurting of water they prevent it from actually you know sticking to the walls of the round bottom flask so it they prevent spurting of water next so water evaporates from here and this uh these vapors are then pass and uh, these vapors then evaporate and these pass from here to here where they touch the be uh, thermometer as well all right and then they move through the Liebig condenser now one very important thing to note is that this lab why is water inlet from the right side while the water outlet is from the left side there is a very important reason behind it the reason is that water if 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 water inlet was from the left side then water would run out quickly because it would be a gravity fed process all right so what would happen is that water would come here and will eventually reach here but in what very far in a very fast manner so what happens is that when uh, so what happens is that this makes it very inefficient why because water will leave very quickly and when it leaves very quickly it won't be able to condense it all right next we also uh, install water inlet and outlet outlet in this manner is so that the uncondensed vapors or uh, so when vapors come here not all of them will condense immediately some will remain uncondensed so the uncondensed vapor shall not pass uncondensed so uh, it will actually condense the vapor at the end now still some vapor is left and most of them most of it has turned into water so it passes into a conical flask now some students ask that whether can uh, whether we can actually stop the conical flask and that's an absurd thing to do i'll tell you why because some water vapor may be left all right and the conical flask may explode due to the vapor pressure all right so don't stop it please so uh, what i want you to write things i want you to remember as first of all the purpose of the thermometer inside the apparatus so it is to note the temperature of escaping vapors all right note the temperature of escaping vapor now why is that important uh, so remember in the first chapter we learned that during the change of state the temperature remains constant all right now we use that property so what happens is that as long as the substance is being distilled the process is going on the vapors are leaving the temperature on the thermometer will remain constant although the heat is being constantly supplied all right so that's the reason so uh, it lets us know actually that the process is going on or not all right so next is marble chips the purpose of marble chips so as i told you earlier they are stirrers stirrers what does that mean the even, they are used for even distribution of heat and the anti pumping granules what does that mean they prevent spurting of water prevent spurting of water all right now the reason for water inlet and water outlet position let 
is the actual reason for why they are placed in a position that is described above is because water would run out quickly making it a gravity fed process so water would otherwise run out quickly making it a gravity fed process sorry it a uh, gravity fed process all right and next condense escaping vapors at the end of condenser condense escaping vapor at the end of condenser As I explained earlier. All right. Next, uh, some students ask again that uh, why not stop with the flask? Why not stop with the flask? The reason is. Oh, sorry. All right. The reason is to let the uncondensed vapors escape so far flask does not burst so you know, what you write is to let uncondensed vapors to escape so flask does not burst All right, so these are the five processes we did today. Uh, we'll also do crystallization and in the next video, I'll be discussing with you uh, fractional distillation, some uses of fractional distillation and chromatography. All right, it will be a fun process. So let's start with crystallization. So, it's not going to be very different from what we discussed about crystallization earlier. So, subsequently, I mean, first of all, what you need to keep in mind is that it is only, can only be carried out. On saturated solutions. Not on any other type of solution. It can only be carried out on saturated solutions. Alright. So what we do is. In the process. I'll describe the process for you. So we what we do is that. Heat the solution till saturation point. Heat the solution till saturation point cool at moderate rate and then you filter off the crystals filter of the crystal and that's the whole process honestly it's the smallest process in whole of this chapter so uh, crystallization is done and that's all in crystallization nothing new that you need to know all right uh, next what we'll do is that we'll start with uh, fractional distillation in the next video I'll be wrapping up uh, this video so next we'll do fractional distillation some use of fractional distillation that are very important such as crude oil uh, petroleum and the use of fractional distillation in crude oil and then we'll do chromatography I need to discuss a few very important things in chromatography so I hope you're enjoying the lessons and the lectures aren't too boring and inshallah you'll uh, I'll keep uploading videos so see you bye